Season 3 of We Learn Systems. Or just to wear less clothes. <laughs> Things we should have packed but didn't. What we did wrong. Of the things we did right. Ha ha ha! Stupid idea. We sold everything we owned to buy a boat and travel the Caribbean. Paradise found. We have reached the beginning of season three of the Pratt Captain and the Sunny Sailor. And boy, have we learned some stuff. I looked back on some of our first episodes and realized just how green we were. So this episode is about what we did wrong and a few of the things we did right. Some of the things we absolutely erroneous about and some of the things were big winning scores. But mostly we want to show you the viewers what we have learned in our two years of traveling. In episode of packing to live on a sailboat, I was so very, very wrong about so many things. <laughs> I love high heel shoes. I love them. And I know that on occasion I'm going to want to wear them and therefore I'm going to need some high heel shoes. <laughs> These high heel shoes which I express so much love for have never been on my feet. So sad. And since that time those pretty little shoes have molded and discolored. Useless. Unless you're in a marina all the time, which we're not. They just weren't very practical for getting in and out of a dinghy, which sometimes has water in it, and then you bring the dinghy to shore, either launch it on the beach, can you imagine walking in sand in high heel shoes? Not a good deal. Or you're pulling up to a dock and sometimes the docks aren't always that great. They look pretty, but not on a boat. The smart shoes that we didn't bring along but we should have, were these types of hiking shoes. <laughs> we spent a lot of time hiking the mountains or walking on rocky beaches or even pushing our way through unworn trails. These are the kind of shoes we actually need. I figured out how to put things in bags that were easy to store. These bags were actually a pretty good idea, and we're still using them, even two years later. I was very excited about hanging up these shoe racks with swimsuits in the bags. Ha ha ha! Stupid idea. The bag was too large to hang in my closet, and hanging on the outside made them swing around in the rough seas was just plain annoying. Bad idea. Now the net was a good idea, and we still use lots of these nets to store a lot of different items on board. But most of these hats were just not practical, and have been replaced by hats that had strings or cords to go around your neck and stop them from flying off your head. A lot of those other hats had to go. These clips here actually rusted and fell apart. This leather jacket we kept on board the boat in case we flew to visit our kids which lived in the northern parts of the United States in colder weather. Well, it turned into a human-sized event. <laughs> it had to go. <laughs> in episode 10 of Provisioning a Boat for Cruising, I provisioned in the United States before heading out to the Bahamas. I actually did a pretty good job, except for the spices. What was I thinking? I mean, geez. In two years' time, I barely went through one of the jars of spices, and I bought five of each kind. Huge waste. A lot of it was given away. The vacuum seal, I still use a lot. Great addition to the boat. 
The air still that I bought to make my own moonshine. Rum is very, very cheap in the islands. In fact, rum is cheaper than buying the actual mixers that go with the rum. And by the time I had two weeks of this fermenting mash sloshing around the boat, and then two hours at least running the generator just to make one fifth of liquor, just not worth it. The Eco Barsha I reviewed in episode seven worked pretty well, but I hardly ever used it because it took too long for the clothes to dry. The clothes would just drip and drip all day and it just became easier to bring our laundry to shore to support the local economy or just to wear less clothes. Now these have been the smart choices we have made. Our sail right sewing machine has repaired torn sails, canvas, a bimini top, and even some of those light dresses that I love to wear so much. Our Rainman water desalinator, or water maker as we call it. Excellent product, excellent upgrade, and well worth the money. We never have to worry about running out of water. Our Hector windlass used for picking up the anchor was also a smart upgrade. We have only had the problem of the foot pedal going out, but the ability to pull up an anchor without breaking one's back is priceless. We also brought microfiber towels, which dry very fast, a must for boat life, corrosion block, which we use all of the time. This product cannot tell you how important it is. We use it on all of our electronics, and many times things that are broken on our boat turn out to be a corrosion problem. You know what they say, 90% of the problems on a boat are corrosion, and the other 10% are probably corrosion. Waterproof bags in every size are just priceless. Priceless. I had cute little purses and different shapes and sizes, and they've all been replaced with these sexy waterproof bags. Even these nice boat bags have begun to deteriorate and are almost useless when traveling around in a dinghy. They're cute, but not practical. These are the new six. Dive equipment that we brought along we use a lot for pleasure diving and also for cleaning the bottom of our keel. Things grow fast on our boat in the Caribbean and we clean the bottom at least once every few weeks using our dive or hookah equipment. Only wish that we had room and had purchased an air compressor to refill our tanks, but that would have mean we'd need a bigger boat. Things we should have packed, but didn't. A machete, good for opening a coconut or beating a path on an unworn trail. Should have packed a machete. Things we didn't pack, but should have a really good can opener. We have gone through so many of those cheap ones that we can find in the islands and have pretty much now resorted to using this. Things we should have brought more of, fans more fans. We rarely run our air conditioning. We don't need it. When we're out on the hook, the wind blows, it's a nice breeze, it's pretty comfortable. But we run our fans a lot. And the fans you buy down here cost a lot of money. And for the last thing, we look back on our journey and wish we had gotten catamaran. Yeah, I hate to admit it. I love my monohull and I love our boat music. But a catamaran for long-term cruising is much more comfortable. When we were buying music, we thought, oh, in a marina, a catamaran costs more money. It's harder to get a spot in the marina. Well, we're never hardly in a marina. We also thought, oh, we'll be back in the States in six months. And now, two years later, we're still traveling. <laughs> so that was wrong. <laughs> but the room and the storage is all that we dream of. 
a catamaran. Should have bought a catamaran. Our Patreon supporters are the best. We are so thankful for them. They support us in our travels, but we give a lot back to them as well. If you become a Patreon supporter, not only would you get to see behind the scenes footage and uncensored footage, and some other clips and videos that are only for our Patreon supporters. You also get to see our actual location because you know these videos are always a little bit behind. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, click the link right here and you can join our Patreon crew. Thanks for watching from the Krabby Captain and the Sunny Sailor. We thank you for coming back to watch as we sail the Caribbean. And please remember to subscribe both on YouTube and on our website. And come back again and watch our crazy antics and what we learned as we sail the Caribbean. Thanks for watching.